Picture this, it's a warm summer evening, and you're sitting in your favorite armchair, the soft glow of the television casting a warm ambience across the room. You flip through the channels, and suddenly, you stumble upon a quaint little town called Maybury. The year is 1960, and the Andy Griffith show has just graced your screen for the very first time. As the whistling tune of its iconic theme song fills the air, you find yourself transported to a simpler time, where life moved at a leisurely pace, and the most pressing issues were whether Aunt Bee's homemade pickles turned out just right or if Opie would finally catch that elusive fish down at Myers Lake. For many, that first encounter with Andy, Barney, Opie, and the rest of the Maybury gang was the beginning of a lifelong love affair with a show that celebrated the beauty of ordinary life. And oh, the memorable moments. Whether it was Andy's sage advice, Barney's comical blunders, or the heartwarming lessons learned along the way, the Andy Griffith show left an indelible mark on our hearts. But there's more to this beloved series than meets the eye. Join me as we journey behind the scenes, exploring the fascinating random facts about the show that made it the timeless classic we all cherish today, 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 today. The Andy Griffith Show, which aired from 1960 to 1968 is a beloved American television series that originated as a spin-off of The Danny Thomas Show. Set in the fictional town of Maybury, North Carolina, the show revolves around Sheriff Andy Taylor, played by Andy Griffith, a wise and affable lawman, along with his quirky but endearing friends and family. The series boasts a memorable ensemble cast, including Don Knotts as the bumbling yet lovable deputy Barney Fife, Ron Howard as Andy's son Opie, and Francis Bavia as Aunt Bee. What sets the show apart is its gentle humor, heartwarming stories, and a commitment to portraying the simplicity and charm of small town life. It captured the essence of rural America in the 1960s, emphasizing moral values and community bonds. The show's iconic whistling theme song, composed by Earl Hagen, remains instantly recognizable. The Andy Griffith Show left a lasting impact on popular culture, serving as a blueprint for future sitcoms that focused on family values and character-driven humor. It continues to be celebrated for its timeless humor and its portrayal of enduring human values. Its influence on television storytelling and its enduring appeal make it a classic in the annals of American television. The Andy Griffith Show, unveiling hidden details in the classic episode where businessman Malcolm Tucker finds himself stranded in Maybury on a Sunday. There's a peculiar lesson about suits. Opie and his son trades horsehairs for a penny. Pulling out these horsehairs from Tucker's suit lapel damages it. But how? Well, the answer lies in how men's traditionally tailored suits are made. They have a stiff lining in the lapels and chest, often containing horsehair. This horsehair makes the suit stiff, yet flexible, helping it maintain its shape and look smooth over the chest. So, pulling those horsehairs made Tucker's suit go soft. In the early episodes, just above the cells in Maybury's courthouse, Yowd spot a small picture of President Woodrow Wilson and his predecessors. But as the seasons rolled on, the picture changed. Now, it showcased presidents up to Dwight D. Eisenhower. This switch happened in most seasons and was based on a poster published by Woman's Day magazine in 1956. Now, here's a tidbit about Thelma Lou, Barney Fife's sweetheart. You might be surprised to know that her last name wasn't revealed until season 6, episode 17, The Return of Barney Fife. It turned out to be Whitfield after she married Gerald Whitfield. As for her job, that remained a mystery. All we knew was that she worked in an office. And there you have it, some intriguing details about the Andy Griffith show that you might not have known before. From the secrets of suits to the changing presidential picture and the enigmatic Thelma Lou, the show had its fair share of hidden gems. Hidden gems. Francis Bavier, who played Aunt B on the 1960 TV series The Andy Griffith Show, had a strong dislike for the coarse language used by her co-stars when the cameras weren't rolling. One incident that became infamous involved her hitting George Lindsay, who portrayed Goober with an umbrella due to his use of such language. This clash behind the scenes was in stark contrast to the warm and wholesome atmosphere of Maybury, the fictional town where the show was set. Bavi's dedication to maintaining a sense of decorum offset the off-camera antics of the cast. Her character, Aunt Bee, became an iconic figure known for her nurturing and kind-hearted nature. The tension between her real-life personality and the coarser behavior of some of her colleagues added an interesting layer of complexity to the production of The Andy Griffith Show. 
This behind-the-scenes clash between Frances Bobby and her co-stars highlights the contrast between the on-screen portrayal of Mayberry and the off-screen dynamics of the cast, making it a noteworthy aspect of the show's history. It's a reminder that the world behind the camera can sometimes be as intriguing as the fictional worlds created on it, even in the idyllic setting of Mayberry. Setting of Mayberry. Setting of Mayberry. In the earlier seasons of The Andy Griffith Show, an announcer would verbally speak the cast member names during the opening credits. However, as the show progressed in later seasons, they stopped using audio credits and instead displayed the cast member names visually on the screen. Alan Melvin, who made appearances in the series, typically played characters on the wrong side of the law or bullies. Out of his eight guest appearances on the show, he only played a good guy twice. In one episode titled Andy and Barney in the Big City, he portrayed a house detective at a hotel where Andy and Barney stayed. In another episode called Ernest T. Base Joins the Army, he took on the role of the Army Recruiting Sergeant. When Don Knotts, who played Barney Fife, left the show, the absence of his character was explained by having Barney move to Raleigh, North Carolina, to join their police department. That's some interesting trivia from The Andy Griffith Show, a classic TV series loved by many. In the 1960 TV series The Andy Griffith Show, Ron Howard's real-life brother, Clint Howard, made numerous appearances as a character known as Leon who was often seen enjoying peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Before the show began, Andy Griffith, who played Sheriff Andy Taylor, had a successful career as a stand-up comedian and actor. Initially, he expected to be the main funny character on the show, and even performed some of his stand-up routines in the first few episodes. However, when Don Knotts took on the role of Deputy Barney Fife and became incredibly popular, Griffith decided to let Knotts be the main comedic figure, with Sheriff Taylor serving as the straight man. When Barney Fife went out on dates or attended formal events, he was known for his distinctive attire, which included a white straw boater hat, a salt and pepper pattern coat, and a red bow tie. Don Knotts continued to wear a similar suit in several of his movie roles after leaving the series, appearing in films like The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, The Reluctant Astronaut, The Incredible Mr. Limpet, and How to Frame a Fick. These interesting tidbits provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and iconic fashion choices of The Andy Griffith Show, making it a beloved classic in television history. The Andy Griffith Show, a beloved TV series from the 1960s, holds its fair share of interesting tidbits. One notable fact is the strained relationship between actors Andy Griffith and Francis Bavier. Griffith and Howard Morris, who played Ernest T. Bass on the show, revealed that Bavier, who portrayed Aunt B, was quite sensitive and disliked her role. This tension led to a distant working relationship. In 1972, Griffith and Ron Howard paid Bobby a visit in Siler City, NC, but were turned away. It wasn't until 1989, when Bobby was terminally ill, that she reached out to Griffith to express regret about their rocky rapport during the series. This behind-the-scenes discord contrasts with the on-screen warmth of Mayberry, where Aunt B played a central and beloved role. Another intriguing aspect of the show's history is related to a clerical error in the 1960s. The last 16 episodes of Season 3, including episodes like High Noon and Mayberry, Opie and the Spoiled Kid, and Andy Discovers America, inadvertently fell into the public domain. This means they are widely available in different formats and conditions. However, the show's iconic theme song remains copyrighted, leading to variations in the music during the opening and closing credits of these public domain copies. Lastly, when Don Knotts, who portrayed Barney Fife, left the show, Jerry Van Dyke was considered for the role of a deputy who would replace Barney. In a twist of fate, Van Dyke opted for the lead role in My Mother the Car instead. He later expressed regret over this decision, acknowledging that taking the deputy part on the Andy Griffith show might have been a wiser choice. These intriguing facts shed light on the complexities behind the scenes of the Andy Griffith show, a classic that continues to charm audiences to this day. In the 1960 TV series The Andy Griffith Show, several interesting facts emerge. One of these facts revolves around Barney Fife's middle name. Throughout the series, his middle name was presented as Milton, Oliver, and the middle initial P at different times. Another noteworthy fact involves the character Goober. When Andy first introduced him, sitting on a bench, his name was Goober Beasley. However, it later became Goober Pyle, 
a change that some fans might not have noticed. In two episodes of the show's second season, Andy Griffith's hand is heavily bandaged. This was not just a plot point, but a result of a real-life incident. Griffith had broken his hand by punching a wall. On the show, Sheriff Taylor explained the bandage by saying he hurt his hand apprehending some criminals. These behind-the-scenes tidbits offer fans a glimpse into the creative decisions and real-life incidents that shaped the beloved series The Andy Griffith Show. Griffith Show. Griffith Show. As we wrap up our journey through the charming world of The Andy Griffith Show, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on your personal connection to this timeless series. This classic television gem, which first graced our screens in the 1960s, holds a special place in the hearts of many. Whether it's the warm, folksy wisdom of Sheriff Andy Taylor, the endearing antics of Barney Fife, or the picturesque charm of Maybury itself. There's something undeniably magical about this show that has stood the test of time. Perhaps you have fond childhood memories of watching it with your family, or maybe it's a source of comfort during tough times, a reminder of simpler days. Whatever it is that draws you to Maybury, we'd love to hear about it. Share your favorite memories, the life lessons you've picked up from the show, or simply your thoughts on why it continues to resonate with audiences across generations. In a world that's constantly evolving, The Andy Griffith Show remains a beacon of nostalgia, reminding us of the values of friendship, community, and the power of a good laugh. So, take a moment to reflect, and if you're inclined, share your thoughts with us. We'd be delighted to hear from you. Thank you for joining us on this journey down memory lane, and for your time and interest in this beloved series. Your connection to Mayberry is what makes it even more special. Until next time, keep the spirit of Maybury alive in your heart. Warm regards. Arts. 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 